Uh, well, yes, recently we've seen the, the devices by Sony, uh, Samsung on, on uh, watch devices. Um, but I think it's, the concept is nothing really new because if you look at early uh, science fiction television, uh, that's right, in, in the 50s and 60s and 70s, um, there, was there was always the, the watch communicator. So I think people, ha people have some kind of desire to have something which is wearable uh, on, on their hand. Um, so I think, I think that uh, actually this form factor has been tried several times before. Um, but the, for, for the average consumer, um, it hasn't really taken off. And, and, uh, and I actually think even now, these devices, I think, will not really become mainstream yet. Because actually, if you compare what is, what is this watch doing with what you can do, with say, like a smartphone, it's um, still much, much more inferior in functionality. So the, the real application of this is, for example, uh, is connecting to your phone. Uh, if you get a if you get a message on your phone uh, or um, you know uh, some alert Twitter or Facebook, then it can come up on your wrist. So right now these these watches are basically connections to your phone, to your calendar. Uh, sure, there's some there is some s uh, value, but I don't think it's enough for people to justify to wear, wear this all the time. The watch also, I think we're going to get there. Um, we have to think what kind of information do people want to receive on their body and, I, and that's uh, important to think about different kinds of communication. Um, so I've been working for several years about how can we produce touch and haptics through the internet. Uh, for example, making hugging suits so people can hug each other, um, parents and children missing each other. Um, and they can hug each other at night time. But the, uh, what I wanted to do now uh, is to try to make something which is small, very mobile, and to try to make a commercial product. Um, so this device is a first prototype. We're making a new version now. But the basic idea is that now we can communicate with touch, physical touch, rather than just seeing audio, visual, or text. Basically what happens is I can squeeze my ring, and as, as I squeeze my ring, my partner, which is my student, will feel squeeze on his finger. And my student now is in another place, he's squeezing his ring, and you can see it lights up with a with, to, to signify the mood, and I'm feeling a squeeze sensation on my, on my finger. Um, so with this way, we're bringing emotional and touch communication to mobile devices. Because touch, taste and smell is directly connected to the emotional and memory parts of our brain and we can get new kinds of emotional communication. But also we, we've got inquiries, for example, from uh, companies like Thomson Reuters for business applications. For example, if you're monitoring the stock market, busy investment bankers, they don't have time to always look at their screens, but they can receive uh, different kinds of signal, pressure and, and different kinds of vibration patterns based on the stock prices. So 24 hours a day they can wear this ring and they can be always updated with stock prices. So we're seeing many different kind of applications including communication, business and entertainment. Well, smell and taste is the least used sensors for internet communication. So what we've made is a device where you can receive a text message but not only get the message but it brings out a scent. So basically what we want to do is we want to uh, allow people to not only send a message with text, but they can also send their emotion. For example, a sweet smell would be a, a, a positive emotion. And maybe you send a rotten, rotten egg gas <laughs> is for a negative emotion. And it's very true that smell directly uh, affects your moods uh, subconsciously. So this kind of communication is, is very important for bringing emotion communication to the internet. Um, but of course you could imagine this could be a new kind of, of advertising. We've had inquiry for a, um, a company which makes frozen food. So you know frozen food, you can't smell it. But if you can have this kind of device, when you pick up the frozen food, uh, it, will, it can uh, connect to your phone and then release a smell. And that will make the buying the frozen food more attractive. And we're working with a, 
a restaurant, uh, the, one of the most famous restaurants in the world in Spain called Mugaritz. And what they want to do is they want to bring their Michelin three-star dining to the public. And, and the best way to do this is to give these devices, which will have visuals of their dishes, but also the smell. Uh, just like um, other senses like touch and taste, uh, smell is very important to experience directly. Uh, it's very difficult to describe smell, for example, with picture or text. And that's why I feel these devices are going to bring completely new kinds of uh, entertainment, advertising, and uh, communication through, through the internet.